A typical Finnish forest, abundant and serene, sets the stage for a visionary endeavor by Jörn Donner in the 1960s. The multifaceted individual, author, filmmaker and politician envisions the creation of a hotel nestled within these woodlands. Why choose this particular location? While the construction of the hotel will eventually be carried out by others, it marks just one of numerous ambitious projects simultaneously brewing in Donner's mind during this era. These ventures will ultimately lead him close to financial ruin. Undeterred, he personally shoulders the burden of many accumulated bills arising from these projects. One could argue that Donner, a well-traveled individual, was ahead of his time. For Finns accustomed to retreating to their summer houses, the concept of an international-style holiday resort might have seemed peculiar. Similarly, foreign investors may have found it unconventional to consider the last Nordic country before the Iron Curtain and the Soviet Union. Although it may feel like the middle of nowhere, the reality is that we are merely less than an hour away from the capital of Finland. This proximity adds a unique dimension to Donner's visionary project, bridging the gap between the tranquility of nature and the convenience of urban life. To bring the project to life, Donner takes a strategic step, selling his inherited force to the city. This enables the city of Huvinka, encompassed by his family's lands, to streamline the process of updating zoning districts. Adjacent to the hotel stands the city's swimming pools. Here Donner ran a cafeteria for a while, offering to sell beer also for those wishing to bathe nude. The city's rules and laws prevent this. Presently the stands of the Besapalo Stadium are getting a protective roof, marking a modern upgrade. Besapalo, a game aching to baseball, once served as a training ground for young Finnish men honing their skills in ball throwing, a proficiency intended to translate to the effective handling of hand grenades during wartime. Close by a street named after Ossian winds its way through a residential area. Who was this Ossian? Among other things, he was Jürgen Donner's great uncle. In Donner's park, a testament to the family's influence, a striking 14-meter-high obelisk stands tall. It is one of the very few obelisks in Finland. This monument symbolizes not only the family's imprint on the landscape, but also serves as a distinctive marker of the town's growth and existence. Ossia's legacy, intertwined with the city's development, is etched into the very fabric of its streets, parks and landmarks. The incentive to erect the obelisk was driven by the employees of the factory founded by Ossian in 1892. What began as a small spinning mill evolved into a substantial industrial plant, significantly altering the path of the once diminutive town. An alleyway named after Donner leads to the factory from the obelisk. Ossian's vision and enterprise led him to purchase seven hectares of land for the factory, an ambitious move that drew skilled workers from England to assist with the initial setup. In this endeavor, Donner aimed to demonstrate that even a financially modest agrarian country had the potential to chart a course toward prosperity. Ossian's industrial venture not only contributed to the economic growth of the town, but also became a symbol of aspiration and progress as echoed by the imposing obelisk in Donner's Park. Ossian had considered entering the paper and steel industries, but humorously acknowledges the limitations imposed by the availability of suitable energy sources. He jokes that since the big rivers are all taken and the small ones are not going to grow, he will focus on wool. Ossian's foresight and industrial ventures led to the inauguration of the city's first electric light at his factory. 
this advancement not only marks an important moment in the city's progress, but also underscores Ossian's commitment to innovation and transformative impact of his industrial pursuits on the local community. The company takes a proactive role in addressing the population's needs by providing housing for its workers. Over nearly a century, the factory emerges as a vital source of employment, benefiting tens of thousands of individuals and contributing significantly to the local economy. At its zenith, the factory attains the status of the 15th largest company in Finland. In the end, factories in distant lands produce more affordable goods that gain dominance in the market. Despite its historical significance and long-standing success, the factory faces challenges from global competition, marking the conclusion of an era for this once thriving industrial powerhouse. Today, the very buildings that once housed Donner's factory have been repurposed to serve diverse civic functions. They now accommodate the city hall, museums, archives, and restaurants, embodying a tangible link between the town's industrial past and its present cultural and administrative identity. A military parade juxtaposed against a backdrop of industrial progress. Here, Jörn Donner's father, Kai, a linguist and a politician, oversees a military parade in front of the factory. At one point, Kai served as the second-in-command to the Finnish military intelligence. His contributions extend beyond the parade ground, as he writes the first biography of General, later Marshal and President Mannerheim. Kai, among other things, pioneers modern anthropological fieldwork methods as he carries out expeditions to Siberia. The town's silent narrators of history the names of past influencers echo through street signs and memorials, telling a tale of the city's origin and growth, a quiet tribute to those who played pivotal roles in shaping the community. These names serve as markers of a shared heritage. In moments of need when the city required land for the establishment of churches and schools, the generosity of the Donner and Monk families shone through. Not only did they contribute valuable land, but they also provided crucial financing, leaving an enduring legacy that extends beyond industry and commerce, encompassing the very fabric of the city's civic and educational institutions. Close to the city, the fields and forests whisper tales of a bygone era when farms were the lifeblood sustaining the existence of burgeoning cities. In these serene surroundings, a different chapter of history unfolds, a time when agriculture played a vital role in shaping urban landscapes. It is here that the young Jörn Donner spent some of his childhood during the Second World War, evacuated from Helsinki for safety. He later tells it is here where he learns to write, smoke, and make love. The landscape bears witness to the evolution of land use, transitioning from traditional farming to contemporary housing and agricultural practices. In one of these residential areas stands a memorial in remembrance of the farm manager executed by the Red Forces during the Finnish Civil War, a reminder of the complex and tumultuous history that once unfolded on these grounds. In the capital Helsinki, Ossia and Donner has built a residence influenced by a cross-cultural marriage with his Scottish wife. The house bears the distinct architectural imprint of Scottish architect Sir Robert Larimer. From Scotland, Donner brings art and architecture for the house. Across from Ossian's house is a restaurant where Jör and Donner frequently conducted meetings establishing a regular table with his presence. A short distance away on the north shore of Helsinki lies another house, a testament to the enduring influence of the Donner legacy. Having inherited apartments here, Jörn Donner establishes his offices and library, crafting a space that serves as a professional and intellectual sanctuary for many decades. 
Hossi and, and his family reside in their house for 17 years, but during the civil war, his wife witnesses executions take place against the wall of the military barracks opposite their residence. The family relocates to England, where Ossian becomes the first ambassador for Finland. His son will become knighted and serves in the House of Commons. Today, the building houses a restaurant for private events. Many may overlook the rich history embedded in the places they call home, unaware of the lives and stories behind the names adorning the street sides. Donner draws inspiration from the rich tapestry of his family's history, as well as his own life experiences and endeavors when crafting the multi-volume novel series about the Anders family. With a touch of humor, he quips about gaining valuable insights from his own business failures, acknowledging that the lessons learned in the crucible of real-world challenges have proven indispensable in the realm of fiction. However, he candidly notes that the financial toll of those failures has been substantial. In his novel series about the Anders family, Jörn Donner intricately weaves the narrative of Finland's evolution into an industrialized nation through the lens of one upper-class family. For the book Father and Son, he is awarded the Finlandia Prize. The books are adapted into film and TV series. In the 80s, in Dirty Story, directed by Donner himself, Erland Josephson acts with his daughter and plays the head of the family business that has grown into a major company. The same year, A. Ilna Barryholm directs Angela's War. The film has its world premiere at the Venice Film Festival. In the 90s, the Finnish broadcasting company makes a 12-part series of the books in Finnish, while Donner has written them in Swedish. His wealth of experience, extensive knowledge, and international perspective become invaluable when he plays a pivotal role in rescuing the Finnish fashion company Marimekko. In a later chapter of his career, Donner helms a film chronicling the woman behind the company. Donner also becomes the first chairman of the board for the cable factory. An ambitious project repurposing a former Nokia cable factory into a vibrant cultural center. Once the largest building in Finland, it now stands as the country's biggest cultural hub, attracting over half a million visitors annually. Within the expansive space of the cable factory, a diverse array of creative endeavors converge. It serves as a home for art schools, circus performers, dancers, galleries, offices, restaurants, and a sauna. Even amid his business ventures, Jörn Donner remains committed to writing, publishing books, and creating films, all while traversing the globe. Today, 47,000 people live in Huvinka. Today, other big companies are located in the city. Today, the local library holds a good selection of Donner's books. Throughout the decades, Jörn Donner displays an impressive juggling act, sustaining his film production company with the assistance of his dedicated secretary. He works both in the Swedish and Finnish film foundations, he serves in the Finnish and European parliaments, and as a diplomat in Los Angeles. Later in life, he considers buying a bookshop in Paris.